Hello everyone and welcome to another Daily Dose of Drupal. This is episode number 71 today. As always, I'm Shane. Go ahead and follow me on Twitter if you haven't already, at smthomas3, and sign up for the CodeKarate.com newsletter. Find me on Google+. Today we're going to be keeping it short and simple. The Path Auto Module. You most likely, if you've been in, around Drupal for very long, you already know this module, so you can probably skip this episode in all honesty. But if you haven't heard of this module, it is one that you should probably be installing on most of your sites. By default, I pretty much install this on every Drupal website I build, and it's especially important if you have users who are going to be generating content like blog posts or articles, and they don't necessarily know the ins and outs of search engine optimization. And what it allows you to do is it allows you to automatically use a pattern to generate the URL alias for a specific piece of content. And it's extremely easy to configure, so we're going to hop right in, get started, and be out of here in no time. I'll go to the modules page and show you that I do have it installed. I have the 7.x 1.2 version, which is the current version. And I'm going to go ahead and you can, of course, set the permissions. I'm just going to go to the configuration page. The first tab you can open up here lists all the aliases on the site. So as you can see, they're all defaulted to content slash something, which is the default for any type of content. You can, of course, edit these if you wanted to change the, the alias. So if you wanted to do something like that, change longer, change it from a really long URL to just a longer FAQ answer, which was this was related to the FAQ module I did a few days ago. But what this allows you to do is, of course, fine-tune it, make changes. You can filter here. You can add an alias. But we're going to go to the patterns, and this is where it gets a little more interesting. You, this it requires a token module, so you're going to need to make sure that's installed as well. But it allows you to set up these patterns using tokens. So, for instance, we're going to look on the content paths. So that's the important one. I do have there'll be one listed here for each different type of content on the site. So I have article content type, basic page content type, FAQ content type, and so on and so forth. It all defaults back to this, the default pattern. So if there isn't something listed here, when you create a piece of content, it's going to default to this. Let's go ahead and change this. Let's change this to be if articles slash. And you can, of course, come down here for the replacement patterns. You can use the current date, for instance. Let's go ahead and say we want it to be Uh, we could go ahead. We won't. We won't use the date in this instance. We'll go ahead and use something else. You could have it note author, for instance. So it could be articles slash author slash, and then we'll go node title. So now instead of just content slash the node title, it's going to be articles slash author slash node title. This could be useful if you have many different authors that are posting blog posts and you want to separate it out a little bit or give your URL some structure. And you can, of course, do this for all these different content types. So you can have this be FAQ slash node title or anything else in here. Whatever you want from the token list in this section. And a lot of these break down and have a couple different options within them so you can really look and see what's available. You can easily just select it, click on the token down here, and as you can see, it drops it in. So that's how that works. We're going to go ahead and give it a try. You can do this for taxonomy paths, user paths, uh, and the FAQ module has it. So modules can build in their own sections in here, but the content paths is going to be the one you're definitely going to want to look at, and of course, taxonomy might be important for you and users depending on your site. So now that I saved this, I'm going to go ahead and create a piece of content, create an article. Just 
giving us a little bit of text and we'll just go ahead and save it. The first thing to notice is now it's the URL up here is test4.codecrowdy.com slash articles slash Shane which is the current username that I'm logged in as slash test dash path dash article. So that's all working great just as we would hope and then basically what that allows someone to do is even if they go in and they're creating an article and they do not have access to this URL path settings it will automatically generate that article. One thing you'll notice is this is an old, old article it still has the old URL alias. I can click this checkbox to generate an automatic URL alias and save it and that will go ahead and update it but what we, what we really want to be able to do is we really want to be able to update these in bulk. So first we'll check out the settings. I generally don't ever change the settings here. They come with pretty sensible defaults. But you can have a look. You can change the separator, change the different alias links. It removes strings, common strings from the, the title. If you're using like a node title or something else, it'll remove it from the path but you can also do this bulk update. So we can go ahead and bulk update any of these different types content, taxonomy, user paths. But before we do that we're gonna go ahead and go to delete aliases. We'll just go ahead and delete all the content aliases because most of these are articles. And we'll now do a bulk update on the content paths. You can see it generated 15 URL aliases now you notice I come back to content slash test article dash one it's gone that's one thing to that it's important to note you might want to be careful doing these bulk updates if you have a live site and a lot of content because your, the search engine will, will have a hard time finding those you might have broken links so you may need to use other modules like the redirect module and you can look at some of these recommended modules here with the redirect and path redirect modules depending on D6 or D7 but we'll come back to the home page you'll see the articles of course are still there if I hover over it and look down here at the URL at the bottom you can see that that one becomes articles slash Shane slash test dash article one articles slash Shane slash test dash path dash article so really easy really basic Go ahead and give it a try if you're not already using this. Like I said before, it's something that I use on almost every Drupal site I build, especially if I'm going to have other people creating content that's going to be, or that I want to be indexed on the search engines. Having a nice clean URL path definitely helps with not only allowing the user to see a little bit about what the page may be about, but also helps the search engines better index your site. So go ahead and give it a try, and I will talk to you again next time on the next episode of the Daily Dose of Drupal. Thanks for watching.